be all. Y'all gonna hear and all that good stuff. Um, not sure how many people we have in here right now. Show zero. High five. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks for the support. No, I'm just playing. Um, we have come through and we are trying from the greenhouse. If anyone's in here, we're going to be Sheena's going to be answering questions. Oh, I'm going to be answering questions. Sheena will be doing some. I'm going to let me mute completely. Sheena's going to be letting me know the questions if you have any questions. We're going to sit here and visit for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start doing some clipping. We did a video this morning on dropping the strings and hanging the cables across the top. Hey, Miss Gail, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Little house in the big woods. Lewis, how's it going, brother? Gardening Warrior Q. It's still hard not to see. Q Kitchen in Magan, um, Virginia. Uh, Kenny was in here earlier. Time to shine. What's up, brother? Mr. Robert, how's it going? The Marshmallow. Blue Farm. How you doing? Nana's Crazy Life. We're not singing today, Miss Donna. <laughs> um, we've got a bunch of people talking in the comments. Thank y'all for stopping by. <clears throat> Pretty much what we're doing is we're, we're going to be hanging out in the greenhouse. We're going to have the live going. If y'all want to ask questions, we're going to sit here and visit for about 15 minutes. If you have questions that you'd want something looked at close up, Go ahead and ask it in the comments, and I will take the other phone. You can see Miss Cajun Hydroponics is uh, we have her phone also. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and take that one and move it. And whatever questions you have, to where I can get closer to it. Um, we've been doing a lot of work. You can see in the background the tomatoes. Uh, the plants are looking nice. They really need to be pruned. But um, we're gonna be hanging out, and I, I still gotta finish clipping them. The pruning is going to go a lot faster once it's clipped. We I like to prune after I clip. That way, if I break anything, I have suckers available to use as opposed to waiting and hoping suckers come back. Because while you are clipping, sometimes you do break suckers and you do break plants. Blue Farm says, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Kaden Microphonics. Uh, Lewis said, what do you think about gravity-fed hydroponics? I'm not sure how that would work, Lewis, um, unless you're using like a drain the waste system. It, it, the drain the waste would work, depending on how big your system was and how high you have it up. Um, but as for the system I use, it wouldn't work because you have to have a pump to pump out the ground into the buckets, then into the drain, and it returns back to the tank in the ground. <clears throat> see i think we got another one that i've missed i'm we, this is the first time we're using it on the phone everybody uh so if we, if we miss y'all we're sorry the chats move along really fast britain farms homestead thank you thank you so much for stopping by um vandal land what's up brother time to shine again so um uh, I can take the phone and go show you. We're going to see how that works out. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear me. I'm going to go ahead and mute the mic where Sheena is and try to use the mic on the other phone and hope we don't get a whole bunch of feedback. Let's see how that works. Now you get to look at this beautiful mode. So... Let me know if the wind gets too bad for y'all to hear also. She will pass it on. All right, we can try this again. It should work. The volume was too high. I'm unable to camera. Okay, so 
This is the tank we have in the ground. Oh, I just put some pyrolite in it. But that's the tank we have in the ground. It's about 125 gallons or 150 gallons. I don't remember exactly. This is the smallest tank we have. We were using 180 gallon in the other greenhouses. The other two wasn't able to get those this time. And you can kind of see on the bottom the pump. It's a 2,500 gallon an hour pump. It circulates and it discharges. We have a um, a relief on it that I have set up for it to be able to stir the, the nutrients off the bottoms. Sometimes it does fall out of solution, but it just goes like that. I'm going to do a more detailed video on it, but it goes, it comes out the side right here, goes out to each run, goes out to each run to here, and then into the buckets. From each bucket, a bucket will drain up so high, then there's a, a filter set up in it. Not a filter, uh, um, a drain set up in it. It pulls it, dumps it, and it just goes back to the tank, and it keeps recirculating like that the whole time. Oh, with the different phones? Yeah. yeah. And there was a, oh, it looks good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> like I said, we hung up a bunch of strings this morning using my top secret tool, uh, the plants. It's not top secret no more. I shared it. I yeah, the queen helped. I got I to gotta give her that. She stood around and watched. She kept smacking me on the butt every time I'd bend over. Uh, <laughs> Aaron. As far as in this greenhouse, this is the third greenhouse or greenhouse number three. This is the new one. All the other greenhouses, we went with seven buckets. I put these closer together, and we ended up with 10 buckets <clears throat> on a 12-foot row. Um, we're going to try. These are all new varieties. I've never grown these varieties in hydroponics before. The three rows on this side is Jetstar. There's 30 Jetstar plants. We're going to leave one, two, three suckers on each plant, depending on how it works out. From those one to three, um, we're going to leave one main, the, the main stem coming off to grow lean and lower. The other two are one, two, whatever we end up leaving, we're going to be leaving those um, till they reach the five to six point, five to six foot mark, and then we're going to top them. That way we're trying to get extra tomatoes off earlier in the season. See how that works out. We're going to do it on Different rows are going to have different setups on how many we leave to see the difference, if it makes a difference in the size of the tomatoes, difference in the flavor of the tomatoes. Um, we're going to have to see how it works out. The, the more greenery we have on it, the more nutrients they're going to use. So we need to make sure that we're pumping enough. There'll be a lot of experimentation going on in this greenhouse. Uh, let's see. King King Puba. <laughs> it's only harassment if you didn't enjoy it. <clears throat> yeah. We smack each other on the butt when we bend over. It's really fun when it happens and they're not expecting it. Um, we can. Oh yeah. Walking in the flea market one time, and I slapped it. It sounded like a 12-gauge went off. Pow! Well, that was a good one, he said. <clears throat> um, here's a Dollar Tree hydroponic pots that we built. I am working on the video for it to put together. I feel comfortable now that it's going to work like it should. Um, you can see the strings are tied up on the top. Having the 11 or 12 high with just that half inch piece of PVC in the middle is really not enough support. Um, it gets heavy. The wind, I guess the heat also tends to make it want to slide to the side. And, um, oh, got a spray. I'm starting to get some aphids on them. Um, so it, it's a learning experience to say the least. The PPM I was running early in the in the in the grow was up around twelve between eleven hundred and thirteen hundred. The plants really wasn't growing. We were putting off some decent strawberries. I cut it back to about eight hundred, and the size of the strawberries are actually getting better. 
and the size of the plants are getting better. I may need to increase it a little bit more. I'm starting to get some, some tip burn on it. Um, one side's doing much better than the other side. There are two different types of <laughs> strawberries. This was that. What Lewis asked? Can we see how you keep those plants inside the bucket? I can. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so with the plants, there's two different ways I use it. I keep, I put them in the buckets. Uh, I would really like to have enough lids on all the, the buckets to be able to keep the lids on top. So these four gallon buckets, which I'll be going away from because I'm not real happy with the longevity of them. Most of the ones from last year that stayed out in the sun for only the summer or the spring growing season into the summer, they're already starting to crack. The paint's peeled. I took time trying to sand them and everything, but the paint peeled. So we're going to be moving away from them. The only good thing about it, I was able to get these with the lids. Um, you can see inside, the only thing we have in here is pure light. That's the growing medium that we're using in there is pure light. Um, with the lids, you're able to drill a hole in the lid and put the, the pump line straight into the lid and not have to worry about it coming out with the wind or anything. With the five-gallon buckets, <clears throat> we don't have the lids. So but any bucket you put in that you're going to be using with the, the five-gallon – I'm sorry, not the five-gallon buckets. With the hydroponics Dutch buckets, any anytime you put medium in it, you're going to want some type of – filter or basket to be able to hold your pear light into place whenever once you put it in so with the five gallon and the four gallon buckets we order five gallon paint strainers um you can get them at lowe's you can, amazon's a lot cheaper than buying them at lowe's if you buy them in larger quantities um but you are able to you put that in there then you fill it with pear light that's the only thing i put in there is pear light as far as the plants, they just like you putting them in the ground, they root up and they make themselves, you know, attach. Uh, the root ball on the inside holds the plants. You know, you can tug on them a little bit. You, I mean, you can pull pretty hard. Right now, the root systems are still kind of small. By the end of the season, the pyrolite will actually be pushing out the top because the root system's growing so big. But <clears throat> that's mainly that, that's the thing that holds the plants in the buckets of the root system. I'll step in the other greenhouse and show you what, uh, with it clipped on. You see, this is a big one, really big. Um, again, in here, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be taking these and adding an extra string for the, for the suckers, the larger suckers. We're going to be doing it with big beef, probably, one to three suckers per plant. Let them get up to about five, six foot tall. Top them to prevent the growth and let the tomatoes um, turn on here. I put these on two days ago. And the suckers, I mean, the plants were no more than an inch above. And you could see how high the plants already grown another probably three, four inches, almost two inches a day in the last couple of days. But that's what holds the plants <clears throat> to the strings is those tomato clips right there. You just tie them on the bottom. You don't tie them off to the plant or to the uh, the bucket. You just come down. You clip them at the bottom, your lowest point. You always want to put it below a, uh, a leaf. Not a, uh, You want to put it below a, a leaf arm. I'm kind of forgetting words right here. You want to put it below a leaf arm, not below a flower truss, because the wind will blow and move it around, and you will end up knocking flowers off. So <clears throat> that's the main thing. You can see some of them a little bit bigger than others. It's not because of the the. the it's not because of the difference in plants. Is the difference in the size of the plants we started? The ones that were almost the same size are still almost the same size. Even growing a second, some of them that are growing two suckers or have an extra sucker, 
have an amazing, you know, the growth system on it is, is there. This one right here is almost the same also. Um, the soil, you wouldn't want to set a system up like this with the soil. The soil is going to be damp with it pumping and everything. You can use, let me rephrase that. Uh, Eric, I'd have to know, let me start this. I would need to know how much, how many plants you have. And if you're growing in dirt, it's going to be a little bit different than what you're using for the, any type of other hydroponic medium that goes into the, um, the answer for Lewis. If you're using dirt, you want, you can add hydroponic nutrients to dirt, just like you would any other type of fertilizer. Um, you could put it on a pump to where you'd put it, but you'd want to put less of it. You don't want your soil to be saturated because you'll, you'll drown your plants. They won't be able to breathe. One thing about the Dutch bucket system is even though the water's running for 15, 20 minutes, an hour, however long you run it, the, uh, the water ends up draining out. And you only keep about anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of an inch of actual fluid on the bottom of it. The pyrolite that's in the buckets don't absorb water. The water attaches itself to the outside of the pyrolite. So that gives the uh, the air roots. You'll, you'll have two different types of roots in your tomatoes or anything you plant. You'll have your air roots. <coughs> excuse me. You'll have your air roots and you'll have your feeder roots. Your air roots are the fine roots, you know, the hairy. They look like hair, long hairs. And your feeder roots are going to be the larger roots with smaller roots coming off of them. But if you do the dirt and you try to saturate it too much to hold a lot of water, your plants are going to drown. They won't be able to breathe. Just just like when it rains too much. Um, so. okay. Thank you. Hey, my raindrop life. Thank you for stopping by. See, I'm not sure if we got any other ones. Eric. Eric. Stop. How's the wind? Are y'all picking up a lot of wind noise on it? We, we do plan on doing some more detailed, or at least I plan on doing some more detailed videos on it. I have uh, a 9 to 10 video series coming out on different things I think is important whenever you're looking to build a hydroponic greenhouse. Um, kind of did this to get some of the questions to where I can add a few more of the questions to the list or add answers to the questions on the list of stuff that I'm looking to use. Uh, Peanut just came in. Hey, Peanut, how's it going, brother? Eric said the wind is not too bad. Little great house, system. yeah, little house in the big woods, a great system. Gardening Warrior Q said, Hey, Danny, I did the karaoke video, but I cannot, I cannot get it posted. Little house, no, any other suggestions instead of here? There's a, a lot of people use a lot of different mediums. Oh, Sorry. hold on, that's all right. The, it got turned off. No big deal. Um, there's a lot of different mediums. You can use coco coir, which is, I don't know if it's more expensive than pyrolite, but a lot of people use the coco coir kind of in a drain to waste to where you just put an amount of nutrients it needs. You fill the bag up till it just starts to overflow and then it turns off with the pump. Then at the end of the season, you cut the bags open and you let the you let the coco coir drain and you throw it away. There there's issues with everything you try to use. Some people can use if you have availability of um of peat gravel. People I've seen people use peat gravel in it. 
it's worked well. You need to pump a little bit more in that type of system than you do with the pier light because the water, I'm sorry, the solution doesn't attach itself to the outside the pier light as well as it does. It doesn't hold as much to it. Um, uh, King Kuba said, what size are the large bags of pier light you buy? What do they cost? I haven't, I didn't buy any pier light this year. I get the four cubic foot bags of pier light. That's normally the, the bigger the bag you buy, the cheaper it is. I bought a bag of vermiculite. It was $24. And the pier light they had at the, at the store was also the same. It was $24. But they didn't have a whole bunch. What I did the last time I wanted to order some, I, I went to my local um, feed, store. feed store to, and I asked him. He's able to get stuff, and he doesn't mark it up a whole bunch if he doesn't keep it on the floor. So, you know, shop around. Go to your local feed stores, especially some of the really small ones, the really mom and pop ones. They might be able to get it, and I paid $17 a bag for it. So when I found them for $17 a bag, I jumped on them and I ordered two pallet fulls, which ended up being about 60 different, I mean, 60 bags, four cubic foot. Um, I didn't need them all at the time, but it helped me out when I moved everything over here. I didn't have to buy any more and I actually still have some. Uh, Mr. Robert. The clay pebbles can also be used. Lewis was asking about it. King Fubai said, uh, you know, about the clay pebbles. I know at one time the clay pebbles ended up being much more expensive than the um, than the perlite, and the cleanup on them was a lot more intense because the fertilizer will, you know, kind of get in the, the, uh, the clay pebbles and the hairs and, and all kind of things like that end up. It, it's more permeable, I guess, the clay pebbles are. Um, pure lights actually lava that they heat up to, I think 3,700 or 4,700 degrees and it pops a four cubic foot bag of pure light weighs like 10 to 12 pounds to have all that stuff in it. Just click the new so. Uh, Mr. Robert had asked, can't you just compost the faint cocoa? Yes. You, and I might've, I was going to say that. Yes, Mr. Robert, that is most of the time what happens. Um, some people do take it, wash it, and try to use it again the second year, leave it out dry, um, wash out the old roots and stuff from the plants that are in it and use it for a second year. Um, I haven't seen anyone try to use it for a third season, but it's, uh, it, it is, I've, I've tried the clay pebbles um, using net cups, put the plant in it, and keep a certain amount of water in the five-gallon bucket. The plants did good, not near as well as they do in, in solid pure light. Um, oh, the, gosh, Jeff just called The, the cockroach is here, boy. Uh, shit's going downhill now. Uh, Eric asked, hey, girl, can you say Yeah, I have seen. You can, you can do a search for hydroponics on YouTube, hydroponics using peat gravel. There's a couple places that that's used it. They also use it in aquaponics, the peat gravel. I'm not sure how the peat gravel would affect. It needs to be washed really well to start with, but I'm not sure how it would affect the pH in your fertilizer solution, um, in your tank that you're pumping it from. And that's something else I'll be getting into shortly, mixing the fertilizer and the pH. I'm lucky enough over here to have a water source out of the property that I can go to. It's a little bit more work intensive, but I have a thousand gallons of water tank capacity with some IBC totes that I put on my trailer and I go out to the property and I pick up water from a well that I have drilled over there and everything actually comes out perfect. You know, I hit right in that sweet spot, sweet spot for the, uh, the pH for the fertilizer and the plants that I enjoy. I don't remember exactly what it is offhand. I think it's like 5.8, 5.9. Uh, I don't want to give out any misinformation on that. But again, you know, even with the, the pH, if your pH isn't perfect for like leafy greens and, and stuff like that, it will grow. It just won't be as pretty and the quality won't be there. But whenever you start having to add, um, like with the town water over here I had, for 250 gallons of town water, I would have had to add a gallon and a half of pH down. The pH down was running about $37 a gallon. 
So that really increases the cost of, you know, production on everything. King Fuba sniffing radishes. Sniffing radishes, boy. High five. Look, you get a 15 pound plus. There's no penalties in this live stream. If you're sniffing roots, you get it, boy. You, you, you Homestead make Aquarius weight. Is in here. You better watch yourself. I'm okay. not scared of Homestead Aquarius. The, More community service. The marshmallow. I'm working on my community service. I am. If we, if you guys asked a question and I missed it, just retype it and then. So I don't want to exit out of the thing again. And it, well, if you do start. Multi Hunter, how's it going? Um, If you click, say, like. Where to begin homestead? It comes up on here. So if it's a question, it'll it'll continue to run. Okay. You see, it stays up there. Yes, Jeff. More root sniffing. Root sniffing is amazing. You know, I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but I, I know a lot of the people's up north, like Are Jeff. Sure? Yeah, I don't smell like roots. Um, I know a lot of our friends up north that ain't here right now. For sure, they're north I ten, so that makes them Yankees. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, we're in the greenhouse right now. It's 75 outside, overcast, with the wind blowing. You can hear it. And inside the greenhouse, it's still almost 95 degrees. Um, it would be a lot lower if we – I still have the roll-up curtains on the sides down, screwed down because of the plants. I, don't, I didn't want to snap a bunch of plants. They would lower the temperatures of it a little bit. But, yeah, it's really, uh, really warm in here right now. Muric acid? Yeah, it does, muric acid does work. It's a little bit harder to come by around here because of the oil field and regulations we have. So, um, oh, Q just put out her, uh, her video. But, yeah, muric acid does work for pH down. It's a great substitute for an actual pH down if you're able to get it. It's regulated over here. More community service. I'm not doing no more community service, Marshmallow. Don't make me mad. Don't, you wouldn't like me when I'm mad. Ask John about that last year. He's mad just making cookies. So, how many if you do not sniff fruits in at least one of your videos? Right, Jeff. You put that out there. The cockroach is telling you. And I'm backing up the cockroach, just like the cosmic cultivators and everyone else on Team Aquarius. I got that back. I'm the enforcer. This is all Shed Wars related. So, if Jeff says it, y'all got to do it. You got to. You have a 50 pound penalty if you don't sniff roots in your video. Okay, Hunter 247. We're about to begin a whole. I'm cool. Looking forward to that. Right now is a, a tough time, and I'll tell everybody that's in here right now, and, and they're going to see it if they haven't started seeing it already. Um, following along with Shed Wars, everything's getting busy. It's tough to keep up with all the videos. And um, it, it's, it's trying to holster. <laughs> uh, you know, it's trying. It, it's, everybody, you know, we need to be patient. That's, I talked about that in a couple of the videos at the beginning before the draft, your Chad Wars. You know, we really need to be uh, patient about what we have going on and everybody else watching. So we'll get there. For us right now, it's super busy. Um, I know a lot of my friends, our friends up north or, you know, further up north, they, uh, he says that every time. I love that, Lewis. That's amazing. <laughs> Never mess with a man that wrestles, a, a, a man that turns green when he's angry and wrestles alligators. <clears throat> Just in time. Yep. Uh, where to begin, Homestead? You sure did. Q did also. We still have, uh, I've been trying to share them out on my community tab. Every time someone um, shares a video, you know, that's another thing. I want to thank everyone that, that participated in that. Everyone that's watched the videos and left nice comments. Thank you all so much, you know, for everyone that's saying that has been a really fun part of uh, Shed Wars this year to be able to, uh, you know, have something a little bit different, you know, right in the middle of getting ready to grow and, um, before all the, the real work gets started with everybody to be able to have the karaoke showdown or sing along or whatever we want to call it. It is, you know, it's been great. Swamp thing. Swamp thing. We ain't found a swamp thing yet. 
that boy will be coming. Well, I'll put it like this. It's been a while since uh, I I've seen a swamp thing. Uh, I've, I've been with Sheena for almost 10 years, so I haven't really been drunk since then. So We saw a dead swamp rat. We saw, yeah, there was a dead swamp rat floating one time. <laughs> but, yeah, when, when I used to drink pretty often, I bought home a few swamp rats or swamp things. Jeff, anyone did a karaoke video and it's not in the playlist, please let me know. Y'all yeah. go ahead and tag Jeff in the playlist. Uh, the comments also grew something with Jeff. We're trying to get it all and I'm trying to share them all out. Um, yeah, he's going to wait till I got to start my. Uh, he don't want us to win that one, so he's gonna wait till I start the uh, my rotation again, so we can't win. Yeah. We just step out on the back court, fish for about fifteen minutes, and catch us up. Uh, um, y'all have any more questions about the? Uh, oh yeah, oh I didn't post that on here. Um. I don't think I did. You know, our furry chicken that we have in our coop in the video. Oh, he was sleeping on the duck's back yesterday, uh, yesterday the day before. Yeah. Danny took a picture of it. We, <laughs> we've caught it a few times before, but every time we got close enough to video, the, the cat would jump off the duck's back. So about the chicken nuggets? No, we did not did the video. I put it out. We did, uh, we received four chicken nuggets the other night. One of Sheena's friends went to low, uh, sorry, Track. tractor supply, picked up some chickens on a, you know, a whim. on a whim. I got home, called, you know, Sheena. She's like, I'm going to let you talk to Danny. Talked to her for about 15 minutes. She's like, y'all come pick these chickens up. I'm like, no. She's like, we're going to throw them in the trash. I'm like, don't throw them in the trash. It's not as much work as you think. So, um, so we had already ordered 16 to yeah. come the next day, but the kids didn't know. Right. We've been telling them that they wasn't getting any new chicks this year um, because with the bird flu and, and all that stuff going on, we didn't know if we were going to be able to get any of them. And um, so we didn't, we didn't want to tell them we were and not be able to get any. So, yep, back to back, we got four one day. Then the next morning, we got 16 more. We lost the one this morning. Oh, it was. It had died this morning when we got up. It got his head stuck in the water bottle, the little hole on the, the trip. He stuck his beak in there, and I guess he couldn't get it off. The wops. The wops. The wops. Most of the queries, I promise I'll endeavor. Again, open my mouth and get you into something having to do with a challenge. Let's finish, sir. John has not done a video yet that we've seen. Um, yeah. Q, you hurt my heart. Would, would you comment to Mr. Robert? I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to say the comment, but you really hurt my heart. My weather's been changing over here also. Um, we're supposed to have sunny skies today. The last two days will rain. Um, we're supposed to have sunny skies today, and it's overcast. The wind's blowing, and probably 15, 18 miles an hour. Um, Hopefully it's good tomorrow. Yeah, we got the dude's birthday party oh, tomorrow. Up. Six years old. Yeah, next week we'll be six around his party tomorrow. So it's pumped up. Tomorrow. Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for the comments on his video. Also, uh, he he was, loves them. I was working over that night and get uh, a call and tell me, Mama, I sing better than my daddy. <laughs> yeah, all, my, all my fans say I sing better than my daddy. <laughs> it was pumped up. Mandel the Lamb says, We're going to be right at 30, I think it is. We got 20 and there's 7 and Okay, so we're going to have 27 chickens and two ducks. Yeah, we have one rooster, but we're not. We're, we're open to move that one. Over. So we got a great story. You don't know what type of breed that is. It's, it's a cat, but it's staying in the chicken coop the whole time. Um, while it was growing up, and it thinks it's a chicken now or a duck. I 
Check it out. <laughs> what to send her? No, she. I was picking. She said that Mr. Robert uh, saying uh, better than me, and I was like, what? 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 Something like that. I was joking around with him. Mr. Robert did an amazing job. Everybody did. This. Everybody did. That was the the karaoke was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, this. The strings all tore up and twisted up right now after we put them up this morning. Oh, here's another tip. I'm going to do a video. But here's a tip. Um, the wind tends to blow out the, the fill lines when, you, when I got them like this. So I put a piece of half-inch PVC pipe. I drill the hole to where... It just barely fits through the field line. And then I use these clamps right here to hold it. That way, even if the wind pushes it, it's only going to move so far. Um, we've wasted two tanks of um, fertilizer solution because the wind got blown out. I'm sorry, the wind blew out the hose onto the ground and we watered the ground. So we wasted two tanks right now. We should be somewhere around 200 gallons of total solution to get all three greenhouses up to this point. And we're right at 600, I think it is, 575, 600. So we did waste some solution. Uh, but you can see it, it's amazing. Hot. Yeah, I see it. We have too many chickens. Oh, you just turned it off. We have too many chickens with a dozen in the incubator, poor turkeys. I tell you what, if you have an incubator, we were talking about that on the live stream the other night. If you have an incubator, you're going to have way too many chickens. The worst thing to have is an incubator and a rooster when you have chickens because, hey, let's do let's do three dozen chickens and hope that we only get, you know, eight or ten of them that hatch. And then you end up with 27 or 30 of them that hatch. <sighs> Um, let's see, we do have some tomatoes on the that set already. This is a supersonic plant. We have three tomatoes on that trust. We're gonna leave all three. Another thing, yeah, but I was getting ready to say that with the larger size tomatoes, um, we try to keep. Three to five tomatoes, depending on how much light we actually have throughout the day. The more light you have, the more tomatoes you can leave on it. If you leave too many and you don't have enough light, they're not going to grow to the right size uh, or they're not going to grow to their full potential. So during the winter time, when we grow in the, we haven't really grown in the fall in the greenhouse for a few years, but we do tend to prune them back to about three tomatoes. Um, at this point in the, you know, in the spring slash summer here, we take them and we prune them back to four, maybe five. Um, and then when it gets closer, when the days are really long, we take them and we do them at uh, five to six tomatoes. It just, it's pretty cool. It really is. Those right there, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> what they are, but them things are putting out some shoots and some they're just growing crazy. What's that? Oh, yeah. We do have a few things. We got the dragon fruit out. We're not going to talk about the dragon fruit too much, but I'm about to get rid of it all. Tired of it. Hey, Courtney, how's it going? Um, we, <laughs> the garlic is doing all right. It would be doing much better if we'd have kept it weeded the whole time. We pulled out, I think it was four and a half, maybe five. Uh, <laughs> Wheelbarrows of weeds. So, but we have been going through here and, and trying to de-weed everything. But the nut grass is, you can't just chop it and, and hope. And it dies, it comes back. Uh, all these peppers that are out here right now all went through the cold and they're kind of stunted. We've been pulling flowers, but the flowers keep coming back faster and faster. Uh, 
here's the sunflowers from John for the sunflower challenge. We had seven out of the ten seeds come up. I think we're down to five or six now. It's hard to tell. And then every year, Sheena, we've been doing this for the past few years. We till up along the edge of the bayou, and we plant sunflower seeds. It ends up being beautiful towards the end of the summer. This year we went and we just mixed up the seeds. We had five or six different varieties. Some are tall, some are short, um, some are small, some are large. We just mixed them into a bowl and she came out here and planted them really close together. Uh, so we're gonna see we're gonna see how that works out. Uh, it, it's gonna be pretty. And you can see grasses like just taking off over here. There's not much we can do about it but cut it. And I haven't really taken a chance on that yet. Or I haven't really caught up with it. So we're not going to be on here much longer. Um, if anybody has any questions, we'll be glad to answer them. We're still here for probably another 10 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions after we get off of here that you'd like to, to look at or ask, <clears throat> go ahead and you know shoot me an email. My email is in the about page. Shoot me an email, and like I said, we, we're going to be working on a, a nine or ten installment video series of start to finish on the greenhouses, what we did, what we do, why we do what we do. We're going to try to get a breakdown on the cost of what we're doing. I think last year it was like six or seven cents a gallon for the fertilizer, and if you don't water the ground, it's amazing how much production you get off of it. Um, I think the tomatoes, we figured out right at 1,400 pounds last year, and it came out somewhere as around maybe 50 cents a tomato to produce with the fertilizer. The good thing about the pyrolite is it's, it's you, you can use it yearly. You do you, bloop, 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 I'm sorry, I'm starting to get tongue tied. Um, you can reuse it yearly. You need to wash it. There's steps to go through the process and everything with that. You do lose a little bit. Um, usually on about 50 buckets, you'll end up losing, you know, one or two cubic feet. So it, it, there's pros and cons to everything, but it really does work. And I really like the way the pure light works. No, don't, don't, no, no, no. If you put it in the comments, she deserves a baby goat. You buying the goat and you paying child support for the goat. No. Don't you dare. So. That's so cute. Until they get big. You put them in there like a chicken. Nope. Get a one. Yes, okay, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. We can get. We can get a goat. If the kids let me. Put the ducks in the freezer. No. Yes. Yeah. Charlie, that's baby's mama. Well. You can't kill the cat's mom. The, the cat will get over it. No, it won't. Yeah. That's cat. how you get your goat. Send me a goat. Don't you dare. Johnny hey, Boy. Mr. Tony, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by, brother. Man on the land and his phone's a piece of trash. Yeah. I was R also. We've had him for three years. What is she up to now? Said get her a, a mini, mini goat. goat. You could tell it's a pup. No. Yes. No. Oh, buy one from Packer Supply and bring it home. Watch how that works out for you. What are you gonna do? You can sleep with it. You probably will. Colt's gonna let you sleep with him in the bed. Scroll back up. I think they had a couple of people pop in. Okay. Check. Chickens are sun, uh, dust baby. I'm watching them turn up right over here. Thanks for stopping by, multi-hunter. 
there you go. The captain says that I need two goats so they can have a buddy. You paying the child support on that, Mr. Robert? You're going to pay the community service bill for it. No, no. I'd rather do the community service than have goats. What does uh, Angie want? Rabbits? Yeah. And she, won't. she backed out on it because she's getting a greenhouse. You she's have a... three greenhouses. That means I get three goats. You got a new car. Three years ago. <laughs> My truck's 20 years old. Almost. No, it's 25. My truck's almost as old as you. I can't help that you're old. We do love each other. Nope. <laughs> Vandal the land says them goats will eat your grass and weeds something good. Yeah, and everything else too. They're gonna they're gonna break out because the kids are gonna leave the doors open and they're gonna end up I'll finally get my, my raised bed starting to work and um they're gonna end up and the kids are gonna leave the door unlocked and they're gonna end up in the in the in the raised beds and in the greenhouse, eat everything to the roots. They're gonna be sniffing roots. I wonder if Mister Robert's gonna penalize them. He's not the daddy. <laughs> There's gonna be a return address on it. I'm gonna know who the daddy is. Take you to Maury. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mari Povich. Here we go. <laughs> Plus, they will fertilize. fertilize your gardens and yard, too. Yeah, while they eat and everything. Root sniffing is forbidden in Shed Wars. Oh. Not gold buying. Gold buying is forbidden in Shed That's a new rule, Mr. Robert. No more buying goats for Shed Wars. Plus, she won't let me make them freeze a bait. Thank you, Mr. Tom. You can eat goat meat. <laughs> you can't. Goats are good to eat. But everything we get's a pet. They name it right now. Right now. They wanted to name all the chickens. 50 pound penalty if you do not sniff fruit. That's right. You get a 10 pound penalty. <clears throat> if you sniff roots, but you get a 50 pound penalty if you don't in at least one video. So that's up to you. Uh, rule number 14. 14. Sniff some soil yesterday. Courtney said that. And get you one that you can milk, too. Oh my God. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. I get fussed at when I'm at work and I can't come home for the night. And I'm like, can you send me some pictures? Right. Oh, you think I can get me? That one right there? Sure. No, we actually almost picked up a goat. The guy said it was a mini goat. Um, what, about two years ago? At Tractor Supply. He said it was a mini goat. Then he said it was about four months old. And... uh. It was a male, which I, I don't care if it's a male or not. But uh, the size it was to be a mini goat, I, I was not. I was not too secure with the fact that it was going to end up being a mini goat. You're not helping, Eric. Well, we could sure use that with all the uh, the cardboard boxes we get over here from Amazon. Somebody has a problem with Amazon. No. And I just have some for work. <laughs> he makes no cookie cutters. <laughs> John's a goat boy. Hey, Rims. How's it going, brother? Rim didn't like my three-minute video today. That was a minute and a half. He said I, I, I owe him his time back because I lied. I didn't even watch it. What was it about? The, the chicks and everything. The cat. I said three minutes of my life, and it was a minute and a half. He's like, that wasn't three minutes. I'm like, it felt like it to me with everything always going on. We don't need to bring, be bringing the poop troop 
up in here. King <laughs> the poop troop. I'm part of the poop troop now. I'm not. I don't know what it is. It's her membership. Oh. I should have put my glasses on. And the sun's like right. It's like I got it as bright as we could. Yeah, we're gonna cut this off at an hour. So about another nine minutes. I'm on standby today. Q, I'm at the point now we don't have much room left to actually be able to put anything. Um we have a few rows playing out for beans and a couple of the, the secret seeds. I've received my secret seeds from Jeff and from John. I'll be doing a video on both of them at the same time in the next couple of days. Um, so we're really running out. The only place we really have left that we'd be able to grow anything else right now would be in the uh, where the fire pit is. We don't use the fire pit often, but the dude would be devastated. He has a plant he grew at school. Yeah, he, he they grew some uh, chocolate sunflowers. That's cool. So we'll be planting those in with the other sunflowers soon. But um, yeah, we're, we're really running low on space over here. We have a half acre that's shaped funny. Um, we also have to be aware of putting the uh, everything in the backyard can flood easy at any point. No, no, Miss JT, stop. Quit encouraging him. Cole's birthday's next week, guys. Stop. He would like he would like two goats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gro -Cro hey, uh, hey there, Phil. How's it going, brother? Grow Crow Farms. Crow Grow Farms. Man, I butcher that every time. Um, we're going to be on here for about another 10 minutes. No, not 10 minutes. Down to about eight minutes now. We're going to make it an even hour. And my chubs got me some crawfish for Easter Sunday. Yeah, we might do a video on that. Show a... Uh, uh, Wouldn't that make you a goat man? Uh, yeah, because John's goat boy. I'm the man around here. John's the boy. Thanks for stopping by uh, my raindrop life. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks. <laughs> we, we need a order. We found something that's not just for John. We're sending one to John and Robert. But, uh, the black thing? Mm -hmm. yeah, we're sending one to Bob now. I think I sent a special. Just send with it. Yeah. I don't get nothing for my birthday, which I like that, but everybody else gets stuff. Oh my God, I can't wait. She's the sender, not the giver. <laughs> You got a coffee mug today. Oh, we racked up on Carhartt shirts today. Yeah. At Tractor Supply sweatshirts for nine ninety nine. Lewis, um, we're I'm pretty sure we're gonna do some uh run some tape on it. It depends how many people we have here. If my older daughters show up, they're not real uh interested on being on YouTube. So um I'm not sure if they do come while we're boiling the crawfish, we probably won't be recording a whole bunch of it. Uh, but they don't usually show up till after everything's cooked and ready to eat. They have other places they hit first. Crawfish dinner. Well, we actually did this video. Uh, yeah, we actually did a video of some stuff that you can order from Sheena was taking care of a couple people that their family does crawfish pies and, and different things like that. And they gave her, what, three pies? Four pies, like a pot pie and uh, two dozen mini pies. Yeah. We so just did a video on that. We ate that. She got it for Christmas. So um, it was in the freezer. They do, they do store well, apparently, because it's been about four months. 
Um, so we did do a, a taste review on it. We're going to put some links in it. We didn't get any type of uh, a code to lower the prices, discount or anything like that. Um, we didn't even contact the people to let them know that we were doing a video yet. So if they, they give us something, we'll put it in the comments. We're going to link where, you know, where they can be purchased if you'd like to give it a shot and try it. But for the most part, it's just we wanted to share the flavor with everyone else. Um, it is a taste in Louisiana. It's, it's a pretty big deal around here. A lot of people enjoy that stuff. Oh, yeah, if we get goats, it's going to be fainting goats. First time you met my granny. Oh, my, she hated me. She was the I got fussed at. First time I ever met her granny. Went to a birthday party for one of her nephews. And uh, the neighbors had them. The neighbors had a fainting goat. I had never seen one before. And let me tell you, we laughed. We laughed. It was on about a 120 foot leash on an incline in Ohio. We went in Ohio. We were on an incline where it was flat for about 20 feet. Then it almost went straight down. And that goat would come out. I'd hide behind the cage and I'd start wait till he got just to the end and I'd come out running and as soon as he'd get to the angle I'd holler Rawr! and he'd lock up and slide all the way to the bottom then he had to walk back up after he unfaded that was funny she fussed at me told me how can you be almost 40 and still act like that <laughs> and then I put my cat on the leash today to go outside on the porch mm -hmm. she didn't want nothing to do with that I don't understand, Vandal. You're talking about the crawfish? We do have them all over. They're building mounds all around the uh, the raised beds because it stays damp back there. Miss JT, I've never grown up. I'm still a kid when I can be. My daughter <laughs> told me I was immature. Oh, yeah. We're always immature. <laughs> we get that all the time from the kids. Colt's the only one that hasn't told us that yet. We don't know. We have fun together. Yep. I can promise you there ain't many people you know that as a couple is going to call each other Chubbs as the, the pet name. Look each other in the butt. <laughs> people look at us like we're crazy. My daughters, oh my, when the older ones, when they first heard that, when we were dating, I brought her back, mm -mm, called the Chubbs, they'd fuss at me. Tom to sign home said, is Colt like Minecraft stuff still, or what is he into? Oh, Minecraft. That dude, if we let him, he'll stay on his tablet playing Minecraft for hours, and he tries to explain me what he's doing and how to do it, and I just can't comprehend it. But, oh, yeah, he's all into Minecraft still. He loves that stuff. He's into baseball, too, but he's not doing real good at it. He's athletic like his mom. Yeah. And me, I wasn't a real good baseball player when I was younger. I never could hit a curveball. He's showing them pictures of you when you was a stallion back in high school. <laughs> he didn't see those yet, the new ones. He found uh, when I graduated, the cheerleaders made us some books with the uh, clippings, the newspaper clippings and pictures and stuff that we had. Um, I found my old book. It's almost 30 years now, 30, 27, 28 years old. Um you know, you know, you get old when newspaper clippings from when you graduated high school are, are turning brown and starting to tatter and fall apart. But Maya was very nice to me last night. She said, "Huh, you didn't age very well after mm -hmm. seeing the pictures." <laughs> yep, that's it. Six years. Colt's gonna be six uh, on Tuesday. the nineteenth Tuesday. We're doing his birthday party tomorrow, and he loves his Minecraft. We had to buy him a. Well, we didn't have to. We bought him a Minecraft uh, coffee mug the other day to drink his milk out of because he said he, he's not drinking coffee no more. It stunts his growth. He just don't like it. But he's having an Iron Man birthday theme. That's what he wanted. Pumped up. I know, Mr. Robert. I just can't, I can't get the hang of that. I'm not a big gamer at all. Eric, Eric watched his boy play ball for the first time. He's going to watch him tonight for the first time in years. It's awesome, Eric. You know, kids in sports, you, you can't find much better for kids to be doing some type of 
extracurricular activity, especially band and sports. They learn responsibility. They, they learn teamwork. You know, they learn how to deal with a little bit of ridicule, a little bit of ribbing and everything that they're probably not used to. Um, you know, it, it's granted the ribbing and the ridicule is probably not the best, but it does help them, you know, down in life to learn that, you know, not everything's peaches and cream and roses. Not everything works out well. Not everybody's going to be nice. We don't force them to play sports, but if they're asked to play something, we just make sure that they finish out the season. Like, you're not going to quit yeah. in between. If but- it's your choice to play, like, hey, you bring it up, you want to play, you're going to finish the season. Colts kind of at a disadvantage because they moved him up a year early with the coach pitch. And like I said, he's not very athletic, so it's he wasn't too happy the other night. Well, he only made but, the two practices because he was sick. Right, one he, week. they had four practices. He missed two of them, but he's still not very good at, at hitting the ball. Um, he could have used another year in T-ball, but they moved him up. He's gonna have to deal with it. He wanted to play. I didn't really like sports. She used to do dancing. Um, for years, like four or five years, but then she learned to talk to me, and so it's like, oh, either dancing or the band, so she chose the band, and she's been in it ever since. Yeah. She really enjoys that, so. Yeah. We've hit this album, Mark, everyone. Um, if you have any questions about the greenhouses, please shoot me an email on it. I'll be more than happy to answer them. I can get a lot more detailed, you know, with specific questions, and if I have a little bit more time to think about it, this is just, you know, something off the cuff we wasn't planning on stayed a whole bunch of time about an hour in here um i was planning on doing a little bit more work while i was visiting with y'all it didn't happen because it's enjoyable to visit with everybody um so you know that's we're gonna have those videos coming out soon we'll probably do one a week or one every two weeks depending on how it works out with the other videos for shed wars i will be using them for shed wars videos um so just keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in doing a, a hydroponic greenhouse, it's it's super easy. It can be cheap. It can be expensive, depending on how you set it up. To me, the, the system I have, I love it. It works well for me. With the amount of time I have to spend in it, uh, the ease of it for Sheena to be able to take care of it whenever I have to work late or something like that, uh, it, it really see how I want to put that. It, it's really nice. Um, it costs a little bit more to get extra IBC totes because we can't just use the water over here. We have to carry the water back and forth. But yeah, it, it, I mean, 1,400 pounds out of 1,000 square feet last year kind of put you at, you know, a really good point of that's nice. You know, if you need to grow a lot of food in over a period of time, that, that's the way to go. 500 square foot greenhouse and you're able to grow, you know, 700 pounds of tomatoes. <clears throat> it's pretty amazing. So, anyway. Let's see, I don't want to announce you don't want to say bye? Well, yeah, you usually say you're first. No. Stop. All Poke right. you in the ear. See? South Louisiana, boy, you gotta love it. I'm gonna kick in a tea. Grow that. Bye. Y'all grow that later. Thank y'all for stopping by, everyone. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend, and a happy Easter. Later.